History is a very interesting thing. Depending who tells you about it, or even where you read it, odds are things could be depicted differently. I don't think anyone would deny the fact that the Allied Powers, which included Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Romania, Japan, and the United States, worked together to defeat the Central Powers, which was made up of Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire. As we know, after the war, tensions would still be incredibly high, and after about two decades of this, World War II would break out. Aside from many attributing the First World War to the cause of the Second, it's also believed to have been responsible for the Great Depression, and of course, millions of deaths. And this all happened due to the fact that the Allied Powers won. Now, today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what if America lost World War I? How's it going, guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein, and today we'll be looking at how our lives would be affected if history as we know it changed. As always, make sure to stick around until the end of this one for some comment replies for another video. And it seems you guys are enjoying these historical type questions, or I guess you could say what ifs, about the past. So let us know what questions you'd like us to explore next. For now, let's get right into it. Now, history and war in general is an incredibly complex thing, and there's only so much information one can cover in the span of, say, an 8 to 10 minute video, give or take. So, I will say if you don't know a single thing about history or World War I specifically, maybe do some research on your own, as there truly is hours and hours, even days of information that you could consume your time with. For the sake of this video, I'll be giving a very brief, quick summary covering what led to the war and how things played out. For starters, a lot of neighboring countries had treaties or alliances with each other, pretty much saying if for whatever reason there is a conflict between you and another country, as your neighbor or friends you could say, we got your back. These alliances included Russia and Serbia, Germany and Austria-Hungary, France and Russia, Japan and Great Britain, as well as a triple alliance between Great Britain, France and Belgium. So to no surprise, when Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, Russia declared war on Austria-Hungary to honor their treaty with Serbia. This led to Germany declaring war on Russia, which dragged France into things helping aid Russia. As Germany went after France, going through Belgium, Great Britain joined the action, and inevitably this led to Japan helping Great Britain. As you can see, one country invading another directly and in most cases indirectly got numerous other countries involved in a war. It wouldn't be long before the United States and Italy would join the Allied Powers, eventually defeating the Central Powers. The war itself was officially believed to have started after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. With an uprising of nationalism in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which were ruled by the Empire, as well as Serbia, the people wanted to be a free nation. The Balkan Wars or conflicts also led to a lot of political instability, and following the assassination of the Archduke and his wife in Bosnia, at the hands of Serbian nationalist Gavrilo Princip, a handful of countries tried placing the blame on the Serbian government. With Russia's support, Serbia didn't have much to worry about, or so they thought. Following a secret agreement that Germany would support the Austro-Hungarian Empire in the case of war, the Empire gave Serbia an ultimatum, which included terms that Serbia was willing to mostly agree with, minus a few things here and there. The Austro-Hungarian Empire wasn't willing to negotiate whatsoever, and following Serbia's suggestions to make a few changes, the war was officially declared. As previously mentioned, this led to a handful of countries, including Russia, Germany, France, Belgium, the countries a part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and of course Serbia, to all go to war. Regarding the United States, they didn't have any reason to get involved. While the countries were going at it, the states decided to watch from a distance, and under the policy of neutrality, which US President Woodrow Wilson was in favor of, the country offered support to both sides through commerce and shipping. It was evident they didn't want part in this war. However, after German U boats started sinking neutral ships, which included many US ships holding passengers and innocent civilians, it was getting tough on the United States to remain neutral. With Germany declaring the waters surrounding the British Isles to be a war zone in 1915, they had no problem taking down a ship traveling from New York to Liverpool, carrying hundreds of American citizens. This was a huge reason that the general public was in favor of going to war against Germany, and in 1917, Congress passed a $250 million arms bill to set the United States up for war. Germany would continue to attack US merchant ships, and on April 2nd, 1917, President Woodrow Wilson told Congress he wanted to declare war against Germany. And it's no secret the aid of the United States helped the Allied powers win the war. But what if they weren't able to provide that support? Of course, there's a few scenarios that could play out here. America losing in World War I doesn't necessarily mean an Allied loss, but still, if the United States didn't have the manpower or couldn't supply the amount of support they did, who knows how things could have possibly played out. To say that the Allied powers would have definitely lost is a bit of a stretch, but things certainly would have been much harder than they already were. The United States falling could have potentially led to the Central Powers, including a struggling Ottoman Empire, which was on the brink of defeat anyway, to take over. It's also possible that Russia could potentially see the United States as a huge opportunity to expand. So rather than focusing on defeating Germany, maybe they would try to come to an agreement with intentions of expanding their land 
land and reach to the far west. To go with the idea that the Central Powers win the First World War isn't necessarily the question here, and although that likely is what the outcome could have been, that's a question for another day. It does seem evident though, regardless of who were to win World War I, that if the United States were to lose, things would certainly be different in today's day and age. Going with the idea that the Allied Powers still win, it's safe to say the United States could have possibly been split between the powers of Great Britain and Russia, assuming they would feel entitled to having the land in a sense. The same way the Ottoman Empire was split between Great Britain, Russia, Greece and France, it seems the United States, assuming they lost the war and heavily relied on their allies to help them out, would face the same fate. Of course, we could go the other way, assuming the Central Powers are victorious. Again, this would drastically change life as we know it, as the majority of Europe would likely be ruled by Germany, as well as the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This would have likely helped them expand their reach and influence even more throughout Africa, and that would also drastically change the shape of the world as we know it. At the end of the day, any change in history would certainly change the outcome of the present, but a massive shift or change in history, such as a country losing or winning a war they won or lost in the past, well, the changes would be enormous. As crazy as it sounds, things like the internet, cell phones, and even diseases likely wouldn't exist. Who knows how much more advanced or less advanced we'd be as a civilization. It's very likely catastrophic events such as the Second World War, the Great Depression, and even the Cold War, although not such a deadly war, wouldn't have happened at all. For all we know, Germany may have tried to pull the stuff they pulled in World War II, and after agreeing to help the Austro-Hungarian Empire, could backstab them in hopes of world domination. Truth be told, it seems the whole world domination thing was more so the mentality of the dictator of Germany during World War II, not so much the country as a whole. Still, this is also a very interesting direction to go in, as there's no way of telling how things would have potentially played out, say if the German and Austro-Hungarian Empire declared war on each other after disagreements regarding who's entitled to what land. Thankfully, as we know, things played out the way they did, and although it unfortunately led to another world war, as well as other tragic events, it shaped the world that we currently live in. As previously mentioned, I don't know if you guys believe in the butterfly effect or the idea that a small change in the past massively affects the future, but I do. So I can't imagine the impact that a massive change in the past would have in our current present. And I'm fine to leave things the way they are for the sake of, well, you know, me being alive and all. And that does it for this one, guys. Let us know your thoughts below on how you think everything would play out. I mean, to say that the United States losing would automatically mean a central power takeover isn't necessarily true, because for example, if a country made their focus taking over the land of the United States, who knows what opportunities that could have given the Allied powers. Maybe Germany eases off fighting Great Britain to continue pushing the United States, eventually taking over, but giving Great Britain a chance to increase their influence and presence across Germany. It sounds crazy, but imagine if Germany was lost to Great Britain and the United States was run by Germany, which I guess would be their new country. Again, this would change life as we know it. But now I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts on all this down below, and let us know if you guys want to see a video along the lines of, what if the Central Powers won World War I? For now, let's reply to some comments from the video, what if America won the Vietnam War? Wade Wilson said, Chuck Norris single-handedly won us the war in Nam. The, ass <laughs> the assertion we lost is a liberal hoax. Yeah, you know what, actually growing up in history class, I remember when they told us that the US lost, I was like, no, they didn't. Chuck Norris won by himself, and then I got kicked out of the class, but I, I don't know. I think the teacher was wrong, so I agree with whatever you're saying, Wade. You're right. Tony Atherton said, LBQ, please make a video on if money grew on trees. That would be very interesting. I don't know if we've made that video, but I know I've replied to this comment before, maybe not from you, from other people. I think it's safe to say if money grew on trees, which technically it does because it's paper, but that's besides the point, I think it's safe to say it wouldn't hold as much value. That's why apples cost like 80 cents because they're so easily accessible. You don't really have to work very hard for it. You, you can plant an apple tree by yourself and have apples. So with that in mind, think about it with money. If people could grow their own money, it wouldn't have as much value. So it's like anything, you know? It's almost like supply and demand. It's like, if there's a lot of something, then its value decreases. Musa al Aswad said, what if Russia won the Afghan-Soviet war? Again, that's a very interesting question that I think if we did, you know, like I said, it would change the outcome of everything as we know it, but if that's a video that you guys wanna see, let us know in the comments down below of this video, and if we see a bunch of comments, you know, asking for that video, then 100% we'll do it. Let us know what you guys wanna see, though, because we wanna keep you guys happy here on LBQ. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein, and we'll see you in the next one.